Hi everyone, now Moment have come out with a brand new app, literally brand new, called Grain. Now Grain is a color grading app for a iOS device, so iPad or iPhone only. I'm really sorry Android users, unfortunately you've been left out again. Uh, I hope that they bring out a Android version of this, it doesn't look like it's on the cards though. So I just want to head that off at the pass so you're not wasting your own time watching the whole video to find out it's not for Android. So if you're still interested, you've got iOS device, let's get into it and find out all about Moment's Grain app. So what is the Grain app by Moment and what exactly does it do? Well essentially it is an app only on iOS devices where you can create looks for your films by taking one clip, importing it into the app then creating different light effects, change your shadows, contrast, etc. I'll go into all of it. But you can then export that look out of the app and then into your editing software, whether it's Luma Fusion, DaVinci Resolve, Adobe Premiere. I believe Final Cut Pro is meant to work as well, although I haven't tried that out, I haven't got it myself. That's another one that's meant to be working too. So potentially, oh, and also uh, RTRO, RT, whatever that app is called for a moment after put it on the screen. It's another way that you can export the look that you're creating as well. So potentially it's quite a revolutionary app, but let me show you how it works. Okay, so we're in the Moment Grain app now. So what we're gonna do is add a clip of our own rather than the three demo clips they've given us here. So I'm gonna go to create new and then scroll all the way down. And I'm gonna use this clip of the seals. You can use multiple clips, but you can't actually edit them all on one timeline at the same time or do the coloring all at the same time. This isn't an editing app anyway, it's just for color grading and making LUTs. So we can choose that one clip instead of a few, press next, and then we've got the clip inside the app. Now what we can do is press on the bottom left where it's got the time for this clip, which is 21 seconds. I do find if it's over 10, 20 seconds, it starts to get quite slow when you're adding in the different effects. So I'm gonna shrink this down, because we're only gonna use it to make a color, remember. We're not gonna use it to actually export the clip completely and then just use that one clip. We just want the color really as a LUT. So we're gonna play this, let it play out until we get the look we want. I think let's pause it there. And then we can scrub along the timeline from left to right and trim it however we want. So I quite like where that is now. We're gonna press done and then done on the top right. We can add on the bottom right here where the plus sign another clip into our sort of library of clips. But I was gonna press done and be done with that for now. And we now have our clip into grain, so let's see what we can do with it. We've got color first and foremost. You've got lo fi, 35mm, 16mm, blockbuster, cinematic, quite like cinematic, cool, Hollywood, warm, vibrant, VHS, black, white, black and white faded. So I'm going to stick with cinematic. And now with all the effects that you add in here, you can actually customize each effect and to quite a high degree as well, which is really, really cool. So if you press these kind of little adjustable bits in the middle of cinematic square that's turned red, we then go into a whole situation of different parameters that you can change for the color of this look. So you can change the temperature, make it like nice and warm, like a summer's day kind of thing, or you can bring it down, make it much cooler. Really have a lot of fun with this and play around as much as you want to get the look that you want and to see what this can do exactly. You can play with the tint, brightness, contrast, vibrance, saturation, highlights, and shadows. So there's a heck of a lot here. You can also go to curves, so you can adjust your RGBs, your shadows, your highlights, your midtones, all that kind of stuff. Really, really fun things to uh, play around with. Get some really crazy, interesting looks as well. And then here you've got the different hue, saturation, luminance of colors. So you've got the blues, the greens. These don't tend to make a huge difference to me when I'm watching this on the clip here. So if I go to the browns, for example, changing the luminance isn't necessarily gonna make a huge difference. Even the reds isn't gonna make a massive difference, just make it a bit brighter. But that's really quite subtle changes you're gonna make with that. Then we've got the wheel. And again, this can be done with just about any of the looks that you're adding in, all these details and customizations. It's really, really cool. And then in the wheel here, you've got the white dot. So you can move that to the reds if you wanna get a bit more of a reddish hue blues, make it nighttime almost, warmer towards the orange. And um, normally you wanna do it quite subtle, I'm just doing this quite extreme to show you. But there's a lot of stuff you can do there with the highlights, as you can see on the left, the midtones, and the shadows. And I'm gonna go into effects. So this is where it really explodes into something pretty crazy. So now when we go into effects, we've got film, so you've got film grain. So you can create a nice long film grain look, film grain two, film grain three, and you've got film dust as well. So 
you get certain dust particles on the screen like you would with an uh, old school film if you're watching it on a cinema screen and you can increase details of that dust as well so the intensity could be 100% or minus 49 all the way down to zero and the shape of them as well I don't really see much difference in the shape to be honest if you look at the skies you can see a little bit of it and then the speed as well so you can really increase the intensity of the speed and the density of these dots so now it's a lot more visible particularly if you look at the skies and the red areas as well you can see a bit more of the dots too now I'm going to keep that in for now give it a bit of a cool effect but if you do want to delete effects that you have put in you just double tap on the red written effect here and it gives an X you just tap on the X and that will delete the effect so you can get rid of it straight away without having to go for a whole hoo-ha you just get rid of that effect and go back to where you were so on light leaks you've got different options here you've got light leak one you've got light leak two three you've got I think that's light blur I'm not sure why you'd use some of these but I wouldn't use light blur but let's say using a light leak again on this you've got a huge range of customizable options so you've got intensity you can make it much more intense or less than that intensity you've got the flicker so you can make it flicker quite a lot over the image or not so much size and you can rotate it as well so perhaps you want it on the right side or below you can really rotate it the whole way around the image to put it exactly where you want it so there's a lot of options here as well as color hue spread and speed so we're going to keep that quite like that look under blur and sharpen again these are options i probably wouldn't use not really sure why you would but they could be useful for someone but i'm just going to double tap on that and delete it rather than go for all these different customizable options on it and then we've got distortion where you've got that kind of almost telescope look and you've got distortion too, which is a bit like a fisheye. You've got chroma, which I don't think I would use too much of again. There's quite a few options here. I'm thinking, would someone use these options? But apparently they would. I think on music videos, this would be really good. It's meant for filmmakers, but I don't really know how useful this would be for filmmakers as such. Um, I'm not sure when I personally would use these, but you've got VHS2, some nice effects going across there. So we're gonna pretend it's like this kind of retro look, very strange retro look. Um, and obviously we have the colouring that we could have done before but I just want to show you everything and then we're going to stick with that for now just to show you how it looks and you've got overlays as well so if you go to overlays you can do different types of frames here by multiplying the image you've got across the screen you can change the colour of that overlay and you can change the corner radius so you can make it more curved like pillars like this or you can make it nice and straight depending on what you want as well as different options for offset spacing blur if that's something you want to do and you can make it shake as well so if you want to create this weird kind of look then that's something you could do too so let's say that's the look we're going to go for we come out of that we go to effects and we want to save it so you can press save and here's where you can export it to different things and then you can export it as a LUT so I'm going to export this as a LUT to uh, Luma Fusion I'm going to call this wacky so we'll call it wacky done and we're going to export it as a LUT uh, cube size keep it as 17 and you've got LumaFusion right here so you're going to export it to LumaFusion we then go into LumaFusion so we'll see what clip we've got here then once you've gone into LumaFusion double tap on the timeline on your clip and you'll see on the bottom right color and effects and here you can see the different effects that LumaFusion gives you you've got different options here if you press on the cube you've then got 31 or wacky which is another one I've used as well as the Filmic Pro D-Log and D-Flats so we're going to use wacky and it applies it to the image and then we can just press the I to see what it looks like without and the I to see what it looks like with so that's how you export your LUT as well you can do the same with an overlay too you can also share the look as well so if you want to send it an email that kind of thing or uh, airdrop it to a friend who's got the same app as well they can use that as well as a cube file to their editing software if you turn it horizontally you can't actually get it to flip that way. So like when you're using Filmic Pro or LumaFusion, you can't actually do that with this. So you're stuck with the vertical look. And I suppose if you're out and about, maybe that's okay for people, but I prefer to have it horizontal. It feels a bit more like I'm using something proper, if that makes sense, like a laptop or something, even though it's a mini version. You can also use it obviously on iPad. I would say that probably iPad's the best way to use this app. On a phone, it certainly works and it's good, but on a an iPad you just gonna have a way bigger screen obviously and it's gonna feel like you've got an actual proper software rather than something you're trying to fill about with 
on your phone. Also, you cannot use this on photos. So if you're looking to do this with photos as well as videos, you can only use videos on this. You could potentially add your LUT, export it into a software where you've got photos and then add it, but you can't actually use photos within the app itself. So I think that's a bit of a misjudgment perhaps. It's a bit weird as well that you can do videos but not photos. You'd think it would be easier to do photos and videos, but that's another improvement I'd like to see from them as well. And I'm sure a lot of people would want to get this app if they could do coloring on their videos and photos. Well, let's look at the price that this is going to cost you. For me at the moment, I'm just using it to test it out. So I'm spending $4.99 for the first month to seeing if I like it and I may buy it afterwards. You've also got the option to buy it as a yearly subscription. If you want to buy it yearly subscription wise, it's going to be $29.99, that's pounds. Uh, and it's going to be $59.99 to buy it as a lifetime one-off purchase. A lifetime one-off purchase is $59.99. Bear in mind, Luma Fusion is $29.99. It has coloring options. Um, you can import LUTs, all that kind of stuff, create your own kind of images, and that's a one-off payment. So it's a big move by moment to spend, or to get you to spend, shall I say, $59.99 on a one-off payment for this app. It does include all improvements and features and updates they'll be bringing to it. They've already said that they'll bring in waveforms and histograms in the near future, so there are some big things that will be coming to it soon. I think this may be an app that will be good maybe in six months' time. It feels a little bit kind of too in the early stages for me to really want to be interested in it. And it's quite a lot of money as well. So let me know what you think about the pricing of this. Is it way too much? For me, it's way too much, especially the lifetime option. Uh, I may spend $4.99 a month here and there if I want to use it for a specific, for a specific project. Interesting app, really good at what it does. I really appreciate the moment are kind of revolutionizing things quite a lot, especially, you know, given that you've got iPhone basically adding lenses to phones and making kind of moment a little bit less profitable, I imagine. So props to you guys for making something new and revolutionary. For me, I'm going to have to pass on this, I think. But let me know down below if this is something you're interested in, if it's something you're going to buy and what you would use it for as well. What kind of workflow do you use that this would be helpful for? Guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know what you think about the Moment Grain app. See you on the next one. Bye bye.